On September the 23rd, Japanese F-15 and F-35 fighter jets fired warning missiles at a Russian IL-38 reconnaissance aircraft that violated Japanese airspace, according to the Wall Street Journal. This incident was the first time since 1958 that the Japanese self-defense forces used warning salvos. According to Japanese Chief Cabinet Secretary Yoshimasa Hayashi, the Russian IL-38 patrol aircraft violated Japanese airspace three times flying over the waters of Rebun Island in the north of the Japanese archipelago. Hayashi added that Japan sent Russia an extremely strong protest in connection with the violation of borders. As the publication notes, the Japanese Air Force twice transmitted warnings to the Russian aircraft demanding that it leave the country's airspace, but warning missiles were fired only after the third intrusion. The publication's journalists asked the Russian Defense Ministry to comment on the situation, but the department did not respond to the request. Observers note that in recent years, Russian military aircraft have increasingly operated near Japanese territory. In this case, the incident occurred against the backdrop of the second stage of the joint Russian-Chinese exercises North Interaction 2024, in which warships of the Russian Federation and the People's Liberation Army of China maneuvered in the Sea of Okhotsk and the Sea of Japan, as well as in the airspace above them. Conducted simultaneously with joint coastal guard and patrol exercises between China and Russia, the military maneuvers of China and Russia once again emphasized the high level of cooperation in the field of security and defense between the two countries, experts said. The Chinese publication Global Times writes in this regard. According to the Japanese government, Russian aircraft violate Japanese airspace more often than others. Moreover, of the 48 recorded violations, 44 were committed by Soviet aircraft. The small island in the Sea of Japan is situated off the northwestern tip of Hokkaido, one of Japan's four main islands, and to the southwest of Russia's Sakhalin Island. To the east of it is the La Parouse Strait, an international waterway known as the Soya Strait. The aerial intrusion came as a total of nine Russian and Chinese warships transited the La Parouse Strait for exercise in the Sea of Okhotsk, situated to the east of the strait on the same day. It was not clear whether the IL-38 was providing support to the joint flotilla. Soldiers of the 128th Mountain Assault Brigade of the Ukrainian Armed Forces have intercepted with the use of Shark drones the houses of the command post of the invading Russian army and the houses where Russian soldiers gathered in one of the occupied settlements of Zaporizhia region. Later, the soldiers passed the information to the artillerymen and aviation forces. The command post and the deployment location of the Russian servicemen were destroyed by firing of cassette missiles through the HIMAR system as well as by an airstrike. As a result, a large number of soldiers were killed in the area. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky told the Summit for the Future at the United Nations Monday that his country supports efforts to keep all nations united, safe and strictly adhere to the UN Charter. We are now preparing for the secondary summit moving forward with our partners, Zelensky said. We are working on food security, energy security, and holding Russia accountable for its terror. The Pact for the Future, approved by the General Assembly on Sunday, aims to meet the challenges of the 21st century and unite the world's divided nations to move quickly to implement the agreement's 56 actions. Russia proposed an amendment that would have significantly watered down the agreement. Only six countries supported Russia Iran, Belarus, 
North Korea, Nicaragua, Sudan and Syria. 15 countries abstained. Putin has stolen much already, but he will never steal the world's future, Zelensky said. It's important that the world is working to develop a shared vision for the best future for humanity. As soon as such collective efforts begin, true interests are always revealed. Ukraine supports efforts to keep all nations united, safe and strictly adhere to the UN Charter. This time during the work on the Pact for the Future, the same small group of seven accomplices led by Russia has once again acted destructively, always opposing any global initiatives that strengthen the effectiveness of the UN Charter. We are now preparing for the Second Peace Summit, moving forward with our partners step by step according to the peace formula. And we are working on food security, energy security, and holding Russia accountable for its terror. We will address all other points of the peace formula, including the release of prisoners, the restoration of territorial integrity, and more. And we are preparing a document to present at the Second Peace Summit. I invite all leaders, nations, to continue supporting our joint efforts for a just and peaceful future. Putin has stolen much already, but he will never steal the world's future, I'm sure.